Okay, so for the supplies to make a um, succulent tumbler, um, obviously you'll need a tumbler. This one is a, um, I believe it's a 16 ounce. It's a 16 ounce um, slim. Um, you'll need foam to do your um, rim. You can also use clay. Um, I'm just going to use foam, a little container, uh, to mix your acrylic paints. If you're going to try to make your own terracotta color, I couldn't find terracotta magnets for when we go to make the lid and succulents for the lid. And then, um, I like to attach my foam with, um, double-sided tape. Um, and then that way I can, uh, attach it nice and flat and manipulate it a little bit easier than if I try to use like a glue or a Mod Podge. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep my cup. Um, and- We have totally glitter. Yeah, we have lots of glitter. So I'm gonna put all of my other stuff away. I'm gonna prep my cup. And then um, after I prep my cup, then we can clean it and then move on. Um, okay, so let me move my phone. Okay, so do, to do the rim of the band for the flower pot, I stacked two containers on top of each other. And I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm gonna draw a line. Um, Cause I want a little bit of a gap just so that I have room to really um, get a good seal with my epoxy. So let's just hold everything nice and tight and firm. Oh, let me just do this. And then I, I wanna rotate my cup. doesn't look like it's going very well for me. I think because my my cup is sliding so much on my table. So let's just see if we can just get at least one clean line. Probably not. All right, so my, my cup is moving too much on my table. This is not working for my favor. So I'm gonna put something underneath it to give it a little bit of grip because it's just sliding all over the place. You can remove your Sharpie mark with rubbing alcohol. And then let's see, I need something to give it a little grip. Let's put a silicone mat under, net, under it. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, that's not gonna move as much. And I also am at a weird angle so you guys can see. So let me try to do this at like a better angle for me. Okay, so this bad boy here. Okay, so now I have a line that lines up pretty well. Um, so now I know that I want my foam piece, I'm gonna cut it on my Cricut. Um, I know that I'm gonna want it to start here and because this cup is tapered, um, I'm gonna use a tape measure. So I'm gonna take my tape measure, which mine is like really awful because it has like a piece of clay stuck to it and whatever, I don't know where my other one is. So to get a good measurement, I'm gonna start at my three. So I'm gonna take my tape measure and I've decided I want my band to be, let's do, I'm gonna do an inch. So I know I want it an inch around. So I'm just gonna put a little line here. What's wrong, Willow? Let's go in here. Oh, no, no. All right, hold on a little. Okay, so I wanna measure two different places. I wanna measure the width at the very top and the width underneath so that, cause my cup tapers. It's just open. It's just open, baby, it's okay. Can't leave you open. Okay, well, um, so I'm gonna, take my tape measure and wrap it around at the top line. 
a boat. And I have 11 inches is my, is my um, top line. Then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna measure at my dots. I'm gonna line it up at my dots. Hey. That I made. Cookie. Cut, 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 cut. No, we're not cutting. And this one is 10 and a half inches. So now when I go Okay, so I went and I cut a one inch band. I didn't like it, I decided to do one and a half inch. Um, I cut it, I use Silhouette and I have the Pro, so I'm able to like do my measurements and cut it. If you don't have the ability to make templates for wraps on your, like I hate Cricut's design space. I use Photoshop or I'll use Silhouette because I have both machines. Um, you can easily just do, you know, like take a piece of paper and line it all up and then trace it out on your foam and then hand cut your foam. Um, I'm sure that there's other ways to do it on Silhouette. I just don't know what they are because I don't, or not on Silhouette, on Cricut, because I don't um, mess with that very often. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna wrap my foam and I realized I put my measurements, I was off by like a slight hair, but foam is for, very forgiving. So I'm gonna take some double stick tape and I'm going to, lay it on my tumbler right at my line Mommy, yes well oh i see here though hold on i can't hold that right now and where my ends are going to meet I'm just gonna peel that piece up and then just so I make sure I have it stuck all the way around and pull that one down. And then I'll cut this with scissors. All right, put that back for now. And then I know that I want on the top and on the bottom. And you see it's gonna have a gap, but I'm gonna be able to push it together, you see? So I'm gonna put some on the very bottom of my foam. It's not a straight line, so it's a little harder to work with, but it'll be fine. And then I'm just stretch it out, move it with my fingers so that it melds with the foam. Pull up my white here, my white here. line my top up to my line and stick it to my double-sided tape and I'm gonna pull as I do it because I want it to be nice and tight so that there's no gaps in my foam and then now that I've pulled it nice and tight you'll actually see I have a little bit of overhang Okay, Willow. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna push this down really well, all the way around. And you see like where the gap is, it is stuck really well right there. So you can take like an X-Acto knife or whatever and you can just slice right through it if you have a little bit of overhang. Um, let me grab my X-Acto knife here. Hopefully this doesn't have a crappy blade on it. And now I'm gonna just kind of push this foam into this. So they have a relatively flat seam. I think I'm gonna take just a little bit of double-sided tape because that one bottom corner wants to come up right here. I'm gonna lift it just a hair, a little bit less than that. 
because I don't want any epoxy to get underneath anything. around it with my exacto knife rip it off and then I can lift the corner and take that white covering off and just stick it down so now it's stuck pretty well it's on there so now we're gonna paint it you. thank you our terracotta yeah. color um, if you are able to find terracotta colored spray paint or whatever spray paint you want um you probably can spray paint on top of the foam i just am going to go ahead and paint it if you're doing clay don't spray paint on top of clay the spray paint will eat up eat away at the clay and i'm just going to paint on my terracotta paint. okay well hold on you can paint the, um, a different cup okay mommy will give you a cup to paint i'm gonna paint okay. my terracotta paint on i'm using a like a fluffier almost like a blush kind of makeup brush um because i just find that it works better with acrylic paint um and this is on a prepped stainless steel tumbler so it's been sanded the coating has been removed all of that so that um it goes on nice and smooth so that's coat number one it'll probably take about three coats all right, we're going in for coat two. It only takes about like 10 minutes for acrylic paint to dry. Um, and you could also use like blow dryer or a heat gun to speed it up. So coat two. All sure you don't have any weird drips anywhere that you've gotten the whole thing covered. And a third coat would probably be um, all you're gonna need. You just want to make sure that you didn't miss any Mama. spots. All right, so while we wait for paint to dry, let's start working on our lid. I'm going to use a car coaster. Um, they tend to be the perfect size to go onto the lids. And I'm going to use UV resin. And I'm going to fill the car coaster with UV resin. Oh, please don't let this bottle be empty. I'm literally just going to pour this in. And I don't want to like, I guess I don't want to fill it, fill it. That's the wrong word. I want to have a base. So I'm going to let that kind of sit for a minute. I'm just going to move it around with the end of a stick. I have the little silicone sticks. I think I looked in the wrong drawer for it. Um, but I just want to kind of get it where it's like a nice flat base. Working with UV resin just reminds me of my days of being a nail tech. Make sure it goes all the way to all the edges because then since it's self-leveling, it'll start to kind of go where it needs to go. Move it and then give it a little spritz, some rubbing alcohol, pop bubbles and help it level. Pop that bad boy in there for let's just do 30 seconds just to kind of get it, get a base going. Okay, so 30 seconds. It's still pretty soft and bendy, but it's starting to give us a little base. Let's put it for another. 30 seconds because I want to kind of look and see what I want to put in on this on this lid and I got my little pieces off of um, Amazon I think I'm gonna do like four four of these guys all right so our base is done uh, these guys I think I got these off Amazon they have pretty strong sticks okay go play with it outside so I'm gonna see if I can cut it off I don't know if I'm gonna be able to I need I think I need like um wire cutters oh look at that it just popped off it just pulled it right off okay so it's not sticky but we're gonna just kind of 
Um, I'm gonna have to probably glue this bad boy back together. That's okay. We'll make it work. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another layer of UV resin. Squeeze it out. Hold on, babes. And I'm just gonna kind of move it around with the flowers. Pull the sticks out of these guys. Do they come apart? I think they're all glued together, which is nice. Let's open this. Let's open this. Hold on. I got I got this off. Hold on, Lola. Here's here. Oh shit, this one this one's a plastic stick, so this one I can cut off. Let's see. Let's, let's hope I can. Ah, there we go. Let's put some more. Ooh, I just touched it. There was no lid on there, and I just put my hands on there. Put this bad boy, like, right here. All right. Um, actually, let's try to do, let's try to move this one like this this one here this one doesn't want to like go flat I guess because I cut the stick maybe too low probably but that's okay all right I think we're only gonna be able to get three in and I'm probably gonna have to super glue this one back together but that's okay so now I'm gonna slide this I want them as flat as possible so they really look like succulents so I'm gonna slide this back in and I'm gonna put this on for 90 seconds now and obviously it's not gonna be able to get underneath the flowers but I want it to solidify as much as possible um and then I can pop it out and flip it over I this off. oh you know what pull this out really quick I want to make sure I have yes I have I do want to try to put this one on if I can pull this stick out because I feel like it's going to have an open color. spot okay thanks thanks Willie all right I'll use thank you Willow let's see purple. yeah we're white purple yeah all right, I'm going to stick this one in here because it's got an empty space right here that just looks weird and I don't like it. really want to cut, can I cut turn this bottom off? Let's see. Yes, I can. Boom. Okay. So now we're going to stick this back in. We'll do the... 90 seconds and then hopefully it'll hold everything together i'm really mad i can't get this one apart i like this one um i'll have to have my husband cut it with like bolt cutters or something Will it stop? I don't mind. so i'm gonna let this go for 90 seconds and then we'll take it out and we'll flip it over okay our 90 seconds are up let's take this guy out and now i'm gonna stick it in upside down and I want to make sure everything's like pressed on. I'm just probably gonna hold it, and I'm gonna do it for whoop. I'm gonna do it for another 90 seconds, and this is just gonna ensure that like all of the UV resin is cured um, properly. Uh oh. All right, I lost a piece. I didn't press hard enough on it. Um, and I lost a piece. We're gonna go ahead and cure the rest of it. I'm gonna just go ahead and do the 90 seconds again, and then I'm gonna attach this one with some E6000. That one's pretty fuzzy, so that one might not hold, which is fine, because I can, E6000 works so much better, um, in my opinion, than UV resin. All right, so this one that came off, I'm just gonna glue on with E6000. I had to go get a new tube. And I'm just going to put some E6000 right here where um, this guy's supposed to go. Nice little glob. Put my lid back on. Willow, don't do that. Put my lid back on. Stick this guy down right here. Oh, not dark. And I'm just going to hold him for a little bit and just let him sit while I hold him. And while I'm holding him and letting him sit, um, I'm going to um, put my hand back underneath here just to kind of help the rest of the um, 
UV resin keep curing because UV resin does take like two to four minutes depending on the strength of your light to really cure so um and also how thick it is so I'm just gonna hold this guy let this sit underneath here two birds one stone Let's see. all right so he's on these guys are nice and they're all on there pretty well I'm gonna I'm just gonna let it go for another uh like 90 seconds I'm just gonna kind of let it keep going until I think it's fully cured and um then once I get the lid I'll show you how to attach it to the lid Okay, so our cup has two layers of epoxy on it. And the way I epoxy my tumblers is I do one layer and then I wait. I'm in Florida, it's very hot. I wait two hours and then I do another coat and it gives me a really great, beautiful finish. Um, but because I wanted to make sure I got this rim really here really well, the inside of our lip is super dirty. So we're gonna clean that before we move on and put our decals on. And I printed, I did a print and cut of little um succulents and then i cut in gold vinyl oops there's a leaf stuck to my thing not today sucka to put on there so we'll put that those on after we clean up our cup so um now i'm going to go ahead and this is a flapper wheel this one's relatively new so it doesn't have an indent in it yet i'm sure if you've seen other people use them they have an indent um but i just i'm going to turn it on my dremel set at two and i'm going to go around my rim and i'll show you how i do that I'm gonna hold it. I use my pinky to, to uh, stable myself, and I'm literally gonna go around the room like this. All right, so now that I've gone through, I've essentially what I've done is I've broken the epoxy seal. Um, so it's, there's, it's sealed here, but now anything on the rim is no longer connected. So when I go to pop it all off, I'm not going to break the seal of my cup. Um, so now I'm going to take a exacto knife and I'm going to go around my rim and just scrape everything off. I, I'm holding it at a slight angle just because um, I don't want to gouge any of this. Okay, Willow. And then as for all the stuff, all the epoxy that's on the inside of the rim, I'm just going to take my knife and kind of wedge my point in there. Be real careful because you don't want it to pop and cut yourself. But once you kind of get it broken it all just pops right out okay so now i'm going to take some acetone and clean up the rim acetone yeah <laughs> a little acetone yeah but i don't know how my face so, so makeup pad acetone go inside this is going to get rid of any residue any um paint all of that off the inside of it yeah. and on the very top of the room i'm also going to do that i'm going to wipe it off and boom there we go nice clean rim now um i don't have to sand because um Oh, bottom, that's all dirty for my table. I, I don't have to sand it because I um, use an epoxy mixer and then um, when I apply it, it doesn't really have any bubbles. And then, um, you know, I so I have a nice smooth surface. If you don't have a smooth surface, then you're gonna wanna sand before you put your decals on and clean it. Okay, so I did give it a little sand right here. A little tiny point epoxy had gotten underneath. So I sanded it and you see it's white, but this is why 
we mix our paint and we save it. So now I can just go over and paint over it um, and then it'll be fine. Okay, so I put my, I've made so many uh, tumbler holders and out of, um, out of new pool noodles over the years and they always disappear. I have four kids, it's just, it is what it is. So I put mine on an old turner that I don't use anymore because all of my turners are multi-cup turners now. And I'm gonna use, and I use that because I can move it back and forth with no problem. So then I'm just taking my decal off of my transfer tape. And this is all very thin lines, so I wanna be real careful. And now I'm gonna put it on my tumbler. I have like a huge piece of transfer tape for some reason. I don't know what I was thinking. Rub this bad boy down really well. And this, because these are such thin lines, I wanna be real careful when I pull my tape up, my transfer tape up. Probably should have used a, um, not as strong of one, but it's too little too late now. And boom, not today, sucker. Okay, so I'll save that for the time, put that on my lamp. Now, my little stickers, I'm just gonna literally pull one right up off of my paper. Yeah. Okay, so here's my little thing. I kind of tore it, but that's okay. Once I lay it flat, it'll be fine. I'm gonna stick it on my, uh, my tumbler here. Push it down a little bit off of me. I'm making sure that I put oh, oh, yeah, I'm not oh, okay Willow that I push down all of the little tiny pieces so that nothing's sticking up and then everything is nice and flat on there all right so now all on there looks super cute um i'm gonna let it sit for a little bit even though this is like dry to the touch i'm gonna let it sit for a little bit before i put epoxy on and what i'll do is i'm going to put one coat i will let it sit for a couple of hours and then i'll put a second coat and it'll give me a perfect finish where i almost never have to sand and then this bad boy will be done Okay, while we're waiting for this to dry before we put epoxy, I'm gonna show you really quick how to finish the lid. So this has been sitting, it's completely cured, it's ready. Um, this is my lid. I like I like the smaller magnets just because um, they don't, they're not as obvious on the lid when you don't have the cover on it. And um, I like to do, I like to put them like usually like, so these lids have a little bit of a slant in them, but I want to sit high enough to where I don't have to get rid of this so that when someone doesn't have the lid, this lid cover on, and they want to use it as a regular cup, they still can slide this open and close. So I like to do it in the center, but it's going to be a little bit higher when it's in the center. And that kind of gives you a good spot to um, raise this. Like it's going to sit higher where it'll sit on top of that slant without any issue. And if they want to put a straw in with this, they can because the opening from the, the car thing is right there. Okay, so here's my thought on these magnets. Um, I don't feel like UV resin holds them as well as E6000, but E6000 needs dry time, like serious dry time or something is going to move. So that's a big deal with um, the magnets. So in my opinion, the best way to do it is to do it piece by piece. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to put some E6000 at the bottom of the magnet on here, just a little bit. Oh, that's way too much, it's flowing out of my thing. Fun times, that's okay. Wrap it around the thing. I'm gonna stick it there and I'm gonna like let it just sit and I'm gonna hold it. Um, why is this so dark? Oh. 
Now it's not set, like I wouldn't play with it, but it's gonna sit a little bit, it's a little bit firmer, it's not as gonna slide around as easy as it would if you didn't hold it for 30 seconds. So now I'm gonna do the other side and I'm gonna try to line them up as best as I can. All right, so now it's it's not sliding as easy, but um, I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna do the top for a couple of hours. I really wanted to set. Um, E6000 says that it needs 24 hours cure time. Maximum strength is at 72 hours. So I'm gonna let this set for a couple of hours. Then I'll put two drops on here and just set this on top. And then I'm gonna put it somewhere where it's not gonna be touched and not gonna be moved. And I'm not gonna touch it again until this cup is fully cured and it's ready to go on. Um, I find that E6000 holds way better than UV resin for these little magnets when you pull them back and forth and back and forth. Uh, E6000 is a better hold. I tried super glue, like regular old super glue that, that dries in like 30 seconds. It was a no-go, they popped right off. So um, I'm gonna leave these and then after uh, this has been epoxied and cured, because I'm gonna leave this to sit for 72 hours, they're all gonna be done at the same time. So a couple of hours later, I'll, I'll glue this on, I'll put glue on there and I'll put those on there. Okay, this has been sitting for like an hour. We're gonna go ahead and do the topper now. So I'm literally just gonna put a little drop on each magnet, the top of each magnet. I don't want too much because I don't want it to drip down and glue the magnets together because that would be bad. So I'm gonna take this guy now, I'm gonna put it where I want it to be. So I want this curved indent where the straw is gonna go. So I'm gonna line it up on there and I'm gonna hold it for like 20 seconds on these magnets. And now I'm gonna go set it somewhere where I'm not gonna touch it for 42 hours or 72 hours. 